Welcome to Carol and Gary's Sea America Tour. Hello again, everyone. As promised, one of our first trips after getting settled in at our campground in Coden, Alabama, was to drive nine miles to Dolphin Island. But before we go to Dolphin Island, let me give you a quick geography lesson. Mobile Bay is 35 miles long when measured north to south. It varies from 8 to 24 miles wide. Two small rivers converge 45 miles north of Mobile to form the Mobile River. The Mobile River then flows into Mobile Bay. This system of rivers has been used throughout history for the shipment of cotton. The War of 1812 between the United States and Great Britain demonstrated the need for a system of coastal defense fortifications. After the war, Congress authorized two star-shaped forts for the mouth of Mobile Bay. Construction of Fort Morgan began on the east side of Mobile Bay in 1819. Construction of Fort Gaines began on Dauphin Island on the west side of Mobile Bay in 1819, but came to a halt in 1820 when it was discovered that the site was so low that the parade grounds would flood during high tide. In 1853, the Army's chief engineer presented a revised design plan for Fort Gaines. The new improved Fort Gaines was designed with 22-foot perimeter walls and a 30-foot wide dry moat for additional protection. So you guessed it, our first visit to Dauphin Island was to tour Fort Gaines. In late January 1861, before the Army completed construction of Fort Gaines, Alabama seceded from the Union. The Alabama militia took over Fort Gaines and completed its construction in 1862. Each of the five corners of the fort contain what is known as a bastion. Underground tunnels connect each bastion to the central courtyard. Although configured to have ten guns mounted on top of each of the fort's five walls, probably because of the Civil War, Fort Gaines' armament numbered only 26 guns. The largest artillery piece mounted at Fort Gaines was a 10-inch cannon. The bricks used to build the fort were made by slave labor 20 miles north of Dauphin Island and then barged to the construction site. This is one of the tunnels that connects the bastion to the courtyard. Heavy tracks mounted to the ceiling in some tunnels allowed for easy movement of artillery and other supplies. Mobile Bay is relatively shallow with an average depth of 10 feet. Hopefully you can see the difference in color between the deeper parts of the bay and the shallower areas near the shore. By early 1864, Mobile was one of the last ports open to blockade runners sneaking in supplies to the battered Confederacy. In an effort to stop the shipment of supplies to the Confederates, in August 1864, Union Admiral David Farragut assembled a large strike force of soldiers and ships to attempt to capture the fort guarding Mobile Bay and Mobile. But the Confederates had improved their defenses. Pilings were driven into the shallow water northwest of Dauphin Island. Pilings were also driven into the shallow water southeast of Dauphin Island. This left a narrow deep water passage between the two forts, closer to Fort Morgan than Fort Gaines. Confederate troops had also set up what was known as torpedoes in the water in this deep water area. These torpedoes were actually underwater mines placed three feet underwater that would explode if hit by a ship. On August 3, 1864, 1,500 Union troops landed on Dauphin Island west of Fort Gaines. Throughout that day, sailors aboard the 14 ironclad wooden hull frigates of Admiral Farragut's fleet prepared to run the gauntlet into Mobile Bay. On August 5, 1864, the first wave of Union ships started through the narrow pass, but the USS Tecumseh hit one of the hidden mines, causing it to explode and then sink. Admiral Farragut then issues his famous command, Damn the torpedoes full speed ahead. As the fleet passed through the narrow channel, crews reported feeling gunpowder-filled torpedoes bounce against the ship's hull. Fortunately, no other torpedoes exploded, and the fleet passed beyond the range of artillery. Meanwhile, Fort Gaines, with only one gun able to reach the channel, inflicted no damage on the Union fleet. The troops who landed at Dolphin Island began shelling Fort Gaines, intending to use the fort as a staging area in the taking of Mobile. The nearby sand dunes around Fort Gaines gave Union sharpshooters the advantage of looking down into the fort like a shooting gallery. In addition to the land-based artillery, the Union ships Chickasha and Winnebago lobbed shells at the fort from the north. Without a major battle, Fort Gaines chose to surrender on August 8th. After days of heavy bombardment, 
Fort Morgan surrendered on August 23rd. Our day-long self-guided tour of Fort Gaines was very enjoyable. Many of the fort's buildings, such as the bakery and the blacksmith shop, are in their original configuration. This area on the south wall shows where a cannonball from the USS Chickasha hit the inside of the fort's wall during the Battle of Mobile. After touring Fort Gaines, Carol and I drove west to check out the beaches of Dolphin Island. This concludes our trip to Dauphin Island, Alabama. If you like this video but have not yet subscribed, please do so to be notified of future videos and as always feel free to share with your friends. Thanks for watching.